Bibles to Book of Romans, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We're going to look at verses 11 through 15. Romans chapter 6, verses 11 through 15. The title of the message is, It's Time to Quit. It's Time to Quit. It's Time to Quit. Romans 6, verse 11. The Bible says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Brother Robert, can you please pray for the message? It's time to quit. Have you ever felt like you've been running around the circles mm -hmm. or in a cage like hamster, running the same wheels over and over and over? Yeah. You're not alone. Many a Christian is going through same motions of sin, even though you and I know it's not the right thing to do. We go in circular motions over and over and over. Yeah. It's never stopping. That's the saddest thing about being a Christian, but you still go through the same motions over and over and over. Sin is like a delicious treat, whether it's boba or ice cream you guys had, you know, that you just can't get enough of. It has the control of your brain. And just like drug addicts and alcoholics, you have serious withdrawal symptoms yeah. if you don't replenish it True. or restock those withdrawals. The same sins that have plagued you when you first got saved before you got saved, it is still plaguing you right now. Yes. That's the hardest thing. You know, I got saved back in like around 1997, where many of you guys weren't born. <laughs> but same sin still plagues me. What does that tell you? Sin does have dominion over you, whether you are saved or unsaved. And whether, you, especially if you're saved, it is sad to see that that sin is still controlling you when it shouldn't. Whether it be your lustful sin, whether it be you know, anger issues, whether it be any other sins that's always controlling you. You know, we sang him today, 245, the old account was settled. I mean, it's been settled, you know, all of our sins. If you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're saved once and for all. Because your soul and your body has separated once and for all, which is, you know, spiritual circumcision. That's why you and I can confidently say that even though I still commit sin, I will commit sin, I'm going to heaven no matter what because my soul cannot sin anymore. That's a Christian doctrine, you know, going to Colossians chapter 2. So that's why, you know, once said we're always saved, we could confidently say it according to the word of God. However, your body, you know, it's a different story. Your body will still, you know, try to commit sin on a daily basis. 
as you understand that sin that's plaguing you, you tend to forget when you're committing it how much damage it brings to your life. It's like, you know, if there, there is an electrical fence, and if you touch it, you know you're going to get electrocuted. Mm -hmm. But you might not die. Yeah. But you still do it. Yeah. And we know it's there because God has put a warning sign after warning sign in your life. Yeah. Don't go beyond that fence. And if you touch it, you're going to be hurt. Yeah. But we still do it over and over and over and over. And it just tells you that, hey, you know, you're not reckoning yourself that indeed to sin. You know, sin is so much alive in your life that you don't even understand that your, your you know, body is supposed to be dead. You have to reckon it dead. I mean, it's, it's you know, nailed to the cross. Amen. But no, you know, it's like you keep on listening and listening and doing what your body tells you to do. Because unless you quit today, you know, you hear a lot of message, don't be a quitter, 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 right? And there's, you know, a lot of true instances where quitting is not the right thing to do. Standing up for King James Bible, don't quit on that one. Standing for people of God, Amen. preachers, preachers' wives, standing for what's right, you know, standing for your ministry, and many, many other things. You cannot quit. However, when it comes to sin, you have to quit. Amen. I mean, if you don't quit today, when will you ever quit? If you don't quit like after, like right now, with your commitment from the heart, when will you ever quit? Because it's like an annoying mosquito. That won't stop biting you. Unless you kill it, unless you get out of its sight. Man, sin is like that annoying mosquito. You know, it's going to continue to bite you. And, you know, you'll have its rest, right? It had enough of your blood. So, okay, until, you know, all those blood it goes, runs out, he comes back and bites you again. And that's sin. I mean, I tell you, you know, you could ask my wife, you know, when mosquitoes are around, I can't sleep because I know that it's going to try to bite me. So I have to try to kill it. And it's the hardest thing to do because you can't see that well. And they don't really bite you during the daytime. They usually bite you during nighttime. And so in darkness... Even if you have a bunch of lights on, I mean, God made it in a such a way that we can understand. And we could sometimes, you know, compare it. Like, man, you know, it kind of shows up its face a little bit. Even if you get that zapper, you miss it once, it's kind of hard. And then you just have to wait and wait until damage gets done, right? I mean, those mosquitoes, funny thing is that you know, they play like they're running away, and eventually they come back. They come back to your heat. They come back to whatever that's attracted, yeah. you know, and they come and bite you again. Yeah. And once you get bit, you know, it doesn't go away. Just like sin. Once sin gets hold of you and you start committing that sin, you're going to have mark no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I got bit by that mosquito but maybe an ant or spider, I still have that mark. You might hide it from people's eyes, but you can't hide it from God, right. and you can't hide it from yourself. Right. So sometimes you do have to realize that, man, you know, I've been living a false life. I've been living a hypocrite Christian life. Oh. I, in front of people, I look holy. I try to be holy, you know, in front of my even family members. Because, you know, don't kid yourself. You can hide, you can be secretive, you can hide your sin from your loved ones. And some of you are doing that right now. And, you know, you think you're getting away with it, but you're not. That's why you're listening to this message. That's why I'm listening to my own message. Why? Because God is warning you and I right now. If you don't quit, if you don't get right, if you continue to live in that sin that has plagued you for many, many years, when that cup gets filled, you're done. As in, God has to chastise you as his loving kid. He has to. And when that chastisement comes, there's going to be a lot of scars in your life. 
And you do have to understand, it does not only affect you, it's going to affect people around you. Yes. You and I become so selfish when we're full of sin. You think that you're only doing damage to your own selves and you think you're okay. No. You're always, always, always damaging people around you. Right. You know, your family, your church, your, you know, acquaintance. You know, it's going to affect everybody. That's why you have to, you know, it's like a deal maker. You either make it or break it. You have to like commit your heart, especially this new year. You know, we're still, you know, beginning of 2023. You have to make sure that, Lord, you know, I'm going to quit this once and for all. Amen. You know, Amen. some of you guys have smoked before you got saved. Some of you have done some drugs before you got saved. But after you got saved by the grace of God, you stop doing it. So smoking, drugs, like those things, you think is such a huge sin. And you're so proud that you quit once and for all. So if you could quit that one, I mean, there are other things that you have to quit as well. I mean, your envy, your jealousy, right? All those things. You have to just stop it. You know, if you were ever to compare your this sin that have plagued you, whatever it may be, to like smoking and, you know, drugs, I guarantee you many of you guys would have quit a long time ago. Mm. The reason you haven't is because you don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, the reason you haven't done it is because you start justifying. Mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest pitfall of Christians not quitting is because you tend to justify everything, right? You know, we have a couple lawyers in here, right? All your job is to justify many things, right, for the right cases. But as Christians, you tend to forget that you're doing that advocate to your own self for your sins that you commit. You're justifying everything. Lord, I mean, it's a funny but ironic but it's a sad story. Lord, I have to go to Vegas. I'm hurt, and I'm hurting right now. I need more money, you know. Instead of working extra hours or hard, Lord, I can't do that. That's too much work for me. So I need easy way out. There are many, many Christians who are addicted to gambling. It's so easy. You could do it over your phone. You could go over there. I mean, there, when we street preach in LA, their bus is always lined up. It's free. They take you to you know, these Indian casinos around the area. It's free. You, know? you go there, you lose money, and come back depressed. But you go there again. The same people going there over and over and again. And when you realize that, you know, I have this sin problem, I have to quit, it's a good sign. It's just that what are you doing about it? Many of you, just like me, we do a lot of talking. We're good at talking, you know. But how many of you actually put it into action? That's the biggest issue. You never put it into action. You know, and I'm talking about when it comes to action, it's not for a day or two. It has to be continuous. Yes. Just like when you stop doing drugs, when you stop smoking, it's continuous, right? You haven't done it for years, Amen. by grace of God. Yes. And then you will not do it for another year until the Lord comes back. Because you know that's how serious it is to you. But when it comes to every other sin, well, you still do it, yeah. right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's something that you and I have to really, you know, stand in front of God and be like, Lord, we've been such fools. You know, who's always deceiving you? It's the devil constantly deceiving you, Amen. right? Yeah. The devil's like, it's okay. You know what, brother? It's okay. Sister, it's okay. Your life is so hard. Start giving yourself pity. Your life is so hard. I mean, you gave up a lot of things to become a Christian. Don't you think that God should give you more? I mean, start giving you those, you know, wicked thoughts. Yeah. And, you know, it comes to me as well. Like, man, shouldn't God give you more? Shouldn't God bless you more? Shouldn't God make your situation a lot easier? But God never said he's going to give you an easy situation. I mean, God said he'll give you strength to go through those situations, endure perseverance, but he never said you're going to have an easy Christian life. Right. If you thought you're going to have an easy Christian life after you got saved, you're in the wrong business, <laughs> right? After you got saved as a Bible believer, you're going to be battling each day, each moment, even right now, right? 
devil does not want you to please God. Devil does not want you to quit serving him. So once you quit sinning, you're not going to serve the devil. You're going to serve God. Amen. But other way around, have you ever thought about it seriously? When you don't quit sinning, who are you really serving? You're serving the devil, right? I mean, we say, I'm not a Satanist. You know, I don't worship the devil. I mean, you might not, but you're still pleasing him very well each day. You know, I've heard many, many stories where people fall into sin and start blaming everybody else. I mean, you have counseling sessions with people, and they're like, you know what, you know, it's my upbringing. Of course, I mean, it does have some impact, right? It's my wife. It's my husband. It's my children. It's my grandma, grandpa. It's my cousin. I mean, you name everybody. You name, you know, your cousin from the seventh, you know, like you don't even know them well, you know, and then you bring everybody up. And last person that you blame is always yourself when you should be the first to be blamed. You know, Bob Jones Sr. said that the problem is with you. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the, one of the truest saying. And he also said this, it is never right to do wrong in order to do right. Amen. And so get that out of your mindset. You know, I need to do this, Lord, to bring more glory to you. Yeah. Amen. Ooh, I mean, think about it. We have a brother, Josh, here, right? You know, he's a missionary. And, you know, he wants to spread and pass out more tracts, Right? And, but he doesn't have it. In order to get those, he needs money, right? Instead of praying to the Lord for, pro, pro, I mean, for him to provide, he goes, you know what? I know the Lord's going to bless me. I'm going to go break into a bank, you know, <laughs> and I'm going to steal some money, and then I'm going to buy tracks with that money, stolen money, <laughs> and then I know the Lord's going to bless it, you know. God never blesses it that way. God doesn't. Again, you can't be like, I'm going to go to the Vegas, Lord, I'm going to, you know, bless me with my gambling skills, because with that, I'm going to give more tithe, you know? And this is where real, real danger comes, because some of you, before you got saved, even after you got saved, you're really, really good at some sins, better than anybody else, you know? And then with that you could actually provide a living for yourself. It's true. Yeah. yeah. But is that something that God wants you to do? No. You always have to remember, man, am I doing this for the glory of God? Or am I doing this just to make ends meet for me? Come on. Man, God will make ends meet for you. Amen. God Amen. promised that he will provide your need. Yes. As long as you're not, you know, a lazy bum, right. you know, as long as you do your best, God's going to provide you. I mean, Bible says, well, you know, a lot of times things look very impossible in our eyes. You know, Luke 137 says, for weak God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Luke 1827 says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Amen. So we serve God of impossible. So don't worry about, you know, this impossible situation that you're facing if you are trusting the Lord. I mean, if you want the Lord to really, really work in your life, you have to trust him. And in order to really trust him, you have to get rid of certain things that you are trusting. You know, those are your sins. You have to get rid of it. It's like, it's like this, you know. A little bit of a dirty story, right? But I, you guys are adults, right? So when our dog, right, you know, when our dog, you know, does number two, right? Yeah. You, as a responsible owner, you pick up those, you know, Number twos, right? But, you know, dogs eat a variety of things. They have, like, they, they, and then they eat a lot of hairs. And sometimes hair gets stuck, right? What are you going to do? You're going to just look at the dog, you know, running around with the hair and number two? No. You divide it, right? You release it, right? And that's the job of the owner, right? And as Christians... You and I are going to have a lot of, how should I say, hairs, you know, dragging those sins with us. Yeah, it's true, yeah. But God is there to get rid of it for you if you trust him. Amen. Think about it. If our dog does not trust us and just runs away, right, 
he's going to walk with the dirty stuff all his life. Yeah, that's true. But he trusts us, and then he lets owners do what they're supposed to do. Sometimes you just don't let God do what he wants oh, you to right. do. Yeah, if right. You know, God is God of free will, right? Yeah. You know, we're not like Calvinists out there. You know, we have folks from, you know, Calvinist background. You and I have free will. Amen. Unless you let the Lord do his work in your life, he's not going to do it. Right. Why should he? Right? He's not going to force anything to you. Right? It's just that when you cross the line, he has to punish you yes. for it because he loves you. Right? But until that happens, you have to realize it. God has given you so much grace and mercy Amen. to get right, get right, get right. Through preaching, through Bible reading, yes. Bible study, Amen. through prayer, God is keep on telling you, isn't it time for you to quit yes. yeah. that certain sin or sins that you've been doing for all your life? Because none of us are perfect here. Yeah. If you are, raise your hand, right? None of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. Then there are certain sins in your life that has plagued you for a long, long time. And if you don't get right with the Lord beginning of 2023, I guarantee you when December 23 comes on, if Lord tarries, you're going to be still struggling with the yeah, same sin. Right. Yes. Man, right. I love to have a testimony, you know, at the end of the year. You know, you know what? Beginning of the year, I heard a preaching. Even I myself preached it's that it's time to quit. And by grace of God, I quit. Glory. And I'm going to continue and continue and continue. Amen. Yeah, when that happens, don't you think you're going to get closer to the Lord? Yeah. Don't you think you're going to have a better testimony? Don't you think, I mean, you're going to have a you know, joyous Christian life? Yeah. Amen. As long as sin has a hold of you, you'll never have a true joy in Christian walk with the Lord. You are happy, right? You know, having fellowship with your brethren. But that's very temporary. Yeah. So when that's you're right. by yourself all alone, and those thoughts will come. Those emotions will come. Yeah. You're like, man, Lord, oh, why am I kind of, you know, worried, depressed? I'm just not happy. Yeah, the Lord has you. given you all the answers because you haven't quit your sin. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have that sin controlling you in your life, you'll smile more. Great. When you're yeah. by yourself. I mean, I mean, with other people, you're going to smile, you know. Yeah. Like, you, you always want to hide your feelings in front of people, and especially, you know, brethren here, you know, if you have some work in the ministry God has given you, you want to stay a positive influence, so you're going to smile no matter what. But inside, you know, it's killing you inside. And I've gone through it. Like, inside, man, I am supposed to be saved Christian. I'm continuously committing this sin. I haven't quit. Man, it's just eating me inside inside, inside. Why? Because that's, you know, Holy Spirit convicting you. Yeah. I mean, that's a good thing. Amen. At least, you know, your conscience isn't completely seared with hot iron where you don't have any, you know, care or desire, right? And those are the real Debbie Downers, right? Wet blankets, right? Where when you're talking about sin and quitting about sin, but they had, they have nothing. They have no emotions. They become like those emos, right? Mm -hmm. Not reacting to any kind of anything. I mean, that's wrong. You know, you're created to have feelings, passions, emotions. And when you're continuously committing sin, and if you allow Holy Spirit to at least convict you, you know, you're going to be sad. Yes. You're going to be really down. And it's not a bad thing, right? You, you should be down, you know. If I lived in sin all these years, and I've never really gotten right with the Lord. It's always, you know, this measure of temporary moment for about a week, about a month, even about a year. But you go back to it. And from the experience, you guys could probably agree that once you go back to it, you do more. It becomes bigger. Why? Your flesh was desiring it for all those years. And you're like, man, you released it. And then you're like, you got to do more and more. I mean, it's a simple example. You, you haven't drank for a long time, and then you stayed away from it. But somehow, when the Lord tests you, and then you let the sin overcome you, and then you drink. If you drank two cans of beer before, I guarantee you're going to drink a whole pack. Yeah. 
because you're going to just completely let yourself go. That's what sin does to you. If you don't quit, you know, it, it is going to do bigger and mightier damage in your life. You're, you just wait. You just have to wait, right? You let it continue. It's almost like an avalanche. It's building, you know, that all the snow is continuously building. And at that moment, one more wrong step, one more wrong thought, one more wrong action, then that avalanche is going to come down. What do you think happens when avalanche comes down? You're in there, you know, you might get hurt severely or you might die, and then it's going to affect people around you. Then it is very serious for you and I to understand that if we don't quit sinning, like today, like right now, Amen. we're going to create avalanche of sin right. and those bad effect, I mean, this sinful effect to all of our life and those close around us. It's a very, very sad thing to see people who's not here anymore because of their sin problem, because they never quit. Yes, that's true. If you don't quit sinning, you're going to quit the ministry. That's right. that's it. That's good, Sooner or later, you're going to quit. Yes. Because you can't do two things at the same time. You can't please God and you can't not please yourself or mammal at the same time. Yeah. You can only do one thing at a time. When you think that you're pleasing God, but you're also pleasing the world, the devil, and the flesh, essentially you're pleasing the world, the devil, and the flesh. Yeah. God is so holy. He doesn't want 90% commitment from you. He doesn't want 99% commitment from you. He wants 100% commitment from you. And if you don't quit sinning, then how much commitment are you really giving to the Lord? For example, you come to street preaching. You do visitation. You know, you even teach the word of God. You even preach. But very, very, very small part of you behind the closed doors you do this certain sin in total darkness. When I say total darkness, it means behind people's vision. Yeah. It's just you. Just you. You only know. I mean, some of you do things that only you know. Right? right? right yeah. Your wife doesn't know. Your husband doesn't know. Your mom, your dad, your closest one, the, they do not know. Only you know. And as long as that you know, fire is going, that even if it's hint of like small, you know, flame, one day it will grow bigger. Right. And just like all the fires that's happening around in California, it's going to consume the whole community. And it's going to consume you, and it's going to consume everybody around you. Wow. That's where marriages break. Yeah. That's where, you know, relationships break. Right. That's where you go into a total tailspin, right? You don't want to work anymore. You have no hope in life. You think about committing suicide. You know, you guys have Golden Gate Bridge, right? You know, we have UC Irvine building, you know, here in the south. You know, people go up there and then just jump off the building, you know, and say, like, hey, life is over, right? You're going to get to that point, I guarantee you. As Christians who wants to serve the Lord but who can't quit sin, you're going to get to that point. Because deep inside, you're disappointing the Lord so much. And also around you, there's no solution. How can God give you a solution if you're disobedient to him? Come on. It's going against his nature, right? Yeah. Think about all the Israelites. He loved Israelites, right? But he had to stop them going into the promised land because he disobeyed. I mean, they disobeyed him. Yeah. Same thing. You and I have a place to go. You and I have things to do for the Lord. But if you don't quit right now, you can't get to that point. You see, you see other brethren who's faithful get to that promised land. Yes. But you yourself will be stuck. Mm. It's just that the hardest thing is that, you know, once they're there and you're not there, 99% of the time, you'll be stuck where you are. You, you're not going to go. There's rare occasions when people really get right with the Lord. We've seen it. But that's like one out of 100. You think you're one out of 100? No way. Amen. You and I are majority many of the times because we're not that strong. So if we don't want to get our place to that point, then think about how you can quit 
this thing called sin. I mean, number one thing is that you have to think about what the Bible says, right? I mean, if you, if, if you constantly think about the Word of God, when that sinful situation is presented in front of you, you're going to stop committing sin. Yes. Amen. Because Word of God is, you know, powerful, yes. sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. So it's going to help you stop from quitting. And you have to understand God does not like you when you commit sin. Amen, brother. God is not, you know, days, God showed his love at Calvary. Yeah. It's past tense. Yeah. Don't think that God likes you when you're committing sin. Yeah. I mean, Jacob, have I loved Esau, I've hated. Yeah. God actually hates sinners in their sins. But thank God that you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're saved, I mean, he's going to love you as a child of God. But he's going to have to chastise you. Then if the Lord hates sinners in their sins, how are we going to get out of that judgment at the judgment seat of Christ? So you and I have to think more seriously about it. I mean, if you haven't received any chastisement from the Lord, even though you know you're living in sin, you know, number one, check your salvation. And number two, don't abuse that grace and mercy of God. Amen. You have to be thankful, and you have to really get right with the Lord. Yes. Man, I'm scared to death, right? You know, if, because I fear the Lord, Amen. if I don't stop, man, when will God really, really, really chastise me? Man, I mean, if I were to even imagine, if I were to even ponder about that time, if I continue in this sin, and God's going to get me, quote-unquote, man, that's a very scary thought. Amen. That actually stopped me from doing certain things. I mean, I'm like, man, I, I know how God could really punish people, especially his children. Yeah. You've seen the Israelites, you know, many of the folks out there. In the, I mean, even in Bible examples everywhere. Man, I, I can't, you know. I can't do it. Man. I, I have to quit. You know, sometimes people quit out of exhaustion. Sometimes people quit because they're scared. It doesn't matter what the reasons are. You just have to quit. Amen. And then Lord's going to provide everything else afterwards. Yes. You know, God of impossible, don't you think that he could fulfill your emptiness, yes. your withdrawal symptoms yes. once yeah. you quit? God just says, quit, man. Woman, children, just quit. Yeah. You know, I'm going to do the rest. Yes. Amen. I mean, then you will understand. And there's a great example. And I don't know if you guys, have you guys heard of the blood knife? Blood knife? Okay. It's a Native American way of capturing wolves. There's knife, and then they put animals' blood on it. And then wolves come, and they start oh. licking. Yeah. They continue to lick. And what happens is that now they are instinctively drawn to that blood no matter what, and they start cutting themselves, yes. their tongue, their inside. And then what? These bloodthirsty animals lick themselves to death, yeah. bleeding to death. Unbeknownst to them, they have sealed their own fate wow. when they started leaking. That's what's happening to you and I. It's good illustration. Unbeknownst to us, we're licking that knife of sin. Amen. And we're continuing to do it. Because it tastes good. But before you know it, you and I will bleed to death. Yes. I mean, Bible says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Yep. That's to save Christians. If, if you and I you know, live after the flesh, if we don't quit sin, if we continue to live in sin, God said you will die. Amen. I mean, God's not lying. And we know that. He will make sure that you come home early, right? But it's not really pleasing him. No. no. You and I, I mean, God willing, have so, so much work to do here on earth. Right. I mean, there's so many lost souls on their way to hell. Yes. I mean, there's so many saved people who need to grow in the right Amen. spiritual doctrine, Amen. right? And then truth. But if you don't get right with the Lord, that's what's going to happen. And then... Wouldn't it be the saddest moment? You wake up. I mean, you wake up in heaven. I mean, it's great, but like, oh, how did I get here so fast? You know, 
I feel like I've been duped, you know. Last thing you remember, last image you remember is I was licking that knife. You know, I thought I was, you know, I was really pleasuring myself or, you know, the, you know doing that sin. And suddenly, man, I'm waking up here. It's too late once that happens, right? You know, those wolves, they either die from their wounds or the pack returns and turns on them and rip them, rip them to shreds. Wow. That's what happens. So if you don't stop and if you don't quit sinning, then what's going to happen? You're going to continuously leaking. I don't know about you. It kind of you know, gives me tingly feelings, right? When I imagine my tongue being sliced by knife, right? If you even get a paper cut, it hurts, right? If you're cooking, you know, you cut yourself, it hurts, right? But imagine you're doing that to yourself, to your tongue, to your whole body, continuously when you're committing sin. And the same sin over and over and over. How does wound get bigger, get worse? You attack the same spot over and over and over. Then it becomes not just a little one, it becomes puncture. And then you're going to just bleed to death. That's what's happening, you know, brother. And as a Christian, and I'm ashamed to say it. I mean, I've been licking that knife for, since I got saved. Like, like since 97, like, there's certain sins, man, get a hold of you. And then it constantly gets you. Even though you and I know it's wrong, it gets you. But certain times, it's about time that we have to, like, Realize, as God gives us a warning through his preaching, no more knife. I mean, I'm scared of knife. I don't know about you guys. If you really love knife, you know, you're different, all right? <laughs> you know? I mean, if you see a huge machete, you know, if you don't, you know, stray away from it. I mean, if you're an avid hunter, maybe it's different. But just normal person, you know, I don't think you want to be around someone who's carrying machete around, right? Yeah, that's not a normal thing. Yeah. But you yourself is carrying that machete around. Wow. Man, you're like taking it out and you're just licking it. Man. And then blood is dripping, but you love it. Mm. At first, you think it's that blood that you love. As a wild animal, you're like, oh man, this is the blood of the deer, you know, maybe pig or whatever. And then you're like, oh, it, it tastes a little different. But once you're mixed, once things get mixed and compromised, it's hard for you to discern. Wow. Yes. You can't understand the difference anymore. Mm-hmm. That's why when people who you thought will never commit such a sin, even you yourself <clears throat> thought, I'll never commit such a sin, because you got a taste of it. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe sin is like up here, but you started tasting from bottom here. Mm-hmm. Going up is very easy. Yeah. You're like, wow, you know, this horrible, incredibly, you know, terrible sin. You know, I'm doing it. Yeah. How was that possible? Because you started leaking. And then, you know, it's continuously do it. And it's not something that's hypothetical. It's going to happen to you. If you're living in sin, if you're not going to quit, just like that blood knife, it's going to destroy you one way or the other. So it's time for you to understand that you've chased sin all your life. Yes. Before saved, after saved. Right. And since you haven't quit, you know that it has cost you many, many things. It has cost you your time, your relationship with the Lord, relationship with others, you know, everything else in between. You know, us Christians, we've been leaking the, you know, sin, and we've been pleasing the devil, the world, and the flesh. I don't know about you, you keep on drinking your own blood, you're like poisoning yourself. So you and I have been poisoned by our own sinful ways. You know, what's the common characteristic of someone who's poisoned? They're very weak, they're pale, they're about to die. Does that kind of show your spiritual state? You're pale, no joy, you know, you're such a hypocrite. In front of other people, you think you're okay. You know, when people are sick, They don't want to show their sickness to other folks. So they look like, you know, I'm fine. But come to find out they had like stage four cancer and they die two weeks later. Mm -hmm. That's like you and I. I mean, we're really at a terrible state right now. 
unless you and I get right with the Lord and understand the seriousness of our situation, we're going to just slowly, slowly bleed to death. And then what happens? Once that time comes, it's impossible to get out of it. You're going to be on your deathbed. You're going to be like, man, how much have I hurt the Lord? How much have I hurt others? How much have I have wasted my time as a Christian? That's why if you want to quit, you know, do what the Bible says. Realize that me, myself, cannot defeat these. Just realize it. Yes. You've tried everything. You know, you've tried this recipe, that recipe, every other recipe out there in your own ways. Get rid of it. It doesn't work. You have to go to the Lord. You literally have to go to the Lord like every second. You have to do your Nehemiah prayer like every moment. When that temptation comes, you have to pray. You have to pray and you have to pray and you have to pray. Because if you let yourself go, brethren, you're sacrificing your eternity for this small pleasure of earth. You're sacrificing all your inheritance and you're giving it up for small pleasure of this earth. And finally, don't you want peace in your life? Yes. Yes. Don't you want that perfect peace? Amen. No matter what the situation is, if the world is crumbling, the world's going haywire, but those who is right with the Lord, those who have quit sinning, mm. you know, again, I'm not saying you stop sinning once and for all, but you've quit it. You're, like, you're not doing it. You yeah. might have like relapse here and there, but you've quit completely, right? right? And then sometimes when you quit, you quit forever. That's the case we want to be. Then you have that perfect peace. You rely more and more on the Lord. You rely more and more on the Word of God. You rely more and more on prayer. Yes. You rely more and more on everything from the Lord. Amen. And then, and I think I discussed this with Brother Robert, you become less dependent on you. And then you really are dependent on God yes. for everything. Amen. I mean, I can't stop or quit sinning on my own. I have to depend on the Lord. Amen. You know, with God, everything's possible. With me, it's impossible for yeah, me to right. quit sinning. That's so I'm right. going to let the Lord work in my life. Yeah. I'm going to be like, Lord, yeah. no, I can't do it, but I surely want to quit. So I'm going to give everything to you. Again, brethren, you can't give 99.9%. .9%. You have to give 100% of your heart, of your life, everything to the Lord Amen. in order to even have a chance of quitting once and for all. Let's pray.